Samantha from Scrap Masters Paradise and this is the last segment of our Cameo for Beginners mini series and today we're talking about when to get replacements for things and just basic care for your machine. First off, when you're not using your machine you always want to close this lid and that just keeps the dust and debris out of your machine. Some people also buy slip covers or dust covers for their machine or make one if they know how to sew and that definitely will keep the dust out of your machine. So I just always keep my lid down when my machine is not in use. As far as consumables go, you will need new blades and new mats at some point. So with the blade, you just turn this knob all the way over to the left hand side and you can pull out your blade and this whole piece is replaceable. You don't have to pull out the sharp blade or anything. You just take the whole piece out and you get a new one of these. I think in the Silhouette store they're $12.99. Eventually you will need a new blade. This is my first blade for my Silhouette Cameo. I have not had a replacement yet and I've had my machine since October and it is now near the end of March. So the blades seem to last a really long time. I just knew when I needed a new blade for my Cricut machine if the cuts started to get worse. I know I need a new blade when my cuts don't come out as crisply. Um, sometimes the corners don't come out nearly as nice. The corners will get squished on a design and then I'll know I need a new blade. They just didn't come out as smoothly and the corners started messing up. One other thing you need to know about your blade is paper debris can get inside this blade housing so we need to know how to um, clean this out. And cleaning this out semi-regularly will ensure that your blade lasts longer and you get smoother cuts. So I'm just going to line up this little gray cap that comes with your machine. Um, there's also a little thing on your machine. You can line up your blade with that as well. But I just keep the cap because it's a lot easier when I'm doing this lot of twisting. You just line it up and you start twisting to the lower numbers. Keep twisting and you get to a certain place where it's harder to twist but you can just still keep twisting. And it does take a little bit more force to do this, but, but you won't break it. And you see there's this gap forming right there. That's the gap you're waiting to open. This part hurts to hold it with my hand, so I grabbed this towel. I use this sometimes for stamp cleaning. And I just I'm gonna keep twisting. You see that gap is forming and that's where you can take your piece apart. Sometimes there's paper fuzzies around your blade and it looks like mine has some paper fuzzies around the actual blade. I don't know if you guys can see that but it's got some little bits around it. So this is when you want to be super careful because you do not want to cut yourself. This thing is super duper sharp so you can grab like a, a paintbrush or a toothbrush and get those fuzzies off the edges of the blade. I'm just going to use this towel. Keeping those fuzzies off your blade will make your blade cut better. Sometimes you get little fuzzies inside this cap so you can just blow it out or use a little paintbrush or something to get any of those fuzzies out of your blade. And there's two lines on here right there and right there and you line those up with the two lines on the inside and that's when it'll start fitting back together and then you just wind it the other way. Looking at it, I'm going clockwise. And I just put it back on seven like I had it to begin with. And you can just pop it back in after you clean it and it's nearly as good as new. The other consumable item you have are mats. These mats seem to be stronger and longer lasting than the Cricut mats. So I have not had to replace my mat yet. And I, again, I've had it since October, but the mats will start to lose their sticky. And you'll just know the paper's not sticking as nicely to the mat. There's a couple of things you can do to ensure that your mat lasts a lot longer. Um, for one thing, you want to get off all of the paper debris. If there's any sort of pieces left over after you're cutting, you just want to use a spatula or your fingernail or some sort of tool and get off any little paper fuzzies. And this is just easier to do this as you go along. Uh, but you can see I've left some from various projects on here. You can just clean those off and that makes your mat stickier. Then it has more surface area to stick. Another thing that you can do is rotate where you're cutting. If you're just cutting smaller shapes and you're always sticking your paper right here, try sticking your paper here and having your cuts cut on this side or down at the bottom 
or the other bottom side. So that way you're rotating where your paper's sticking and that will ensure that you get a lot more use out of the same mat. You know when your mat is not sticky enough if your paper doesn't stick. And sometimes the, the paper will stick to your mat and then you stick it in your machine and then the paper will come off as it's being cut. So then, then you need a new mat. And new mats run about $14.99 according to the Silhouette website and I'm sure you can find sales and coupons and deals to get them a little bit cheaper. What I plan on doing is re-sticking my mats. I did this with my Cricut mats for years and it worked really great. So all I do is I mask off the edges of this mat, the part that's not sticky. I can either put the blue painter's tape on that or make a paper template or a cardboard template and just cut out a 12 by 12 shape and then I can just set it over that and protect these edges. And then I spray it with Easy Tech repositionable adhesive and this is 7020. And this is something I got at a just a big box craft store. It is in the wood glues and not in the scrapbook glues. It was I've had the same bottle for years and years and it cost 759. So I just use the same bottle. You just go over it with a light spray really quickly, not very heavily, and you have to wait for it to completely dry before it's sticky. If you try to stick your paper down right after you sprayed it, it will not stick. So that's just one of the weird things about this spray is it has to dry to be completely tacky. And then I get so much more use out of my mats. And actually my most pinned blog post is where I explain how to use this stuff with your Cricut mats. It's just been pinned like 30,000 times. So a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people have tried this technique and liked it. And this one's flying around Pinterest. So this is definitely one of my best tips that I've ever had is to re-sticky your mats and then you don't have to just throw them away when they're just a little bit less sticky. So I plan on doing that and keeping my same mats for as long as possible because I don't like throwing a lot of stuff away. I like to recycle things, I like to reuse things as much as possible, and this one bottle of spray lasted me years with the Cricut and it's going to help me keep my Silhouette mats sticky enough that I can use them for years and years. If your mat is starting to lose its sticky just a tiny bit, it's not yet ready to be thrown away or re-stickied, I have two tips for how to make sure your paper sticks really well and you don't have the paper come off your page. If you just stick it down like so and call it done, of course it's going to peel off as soon as you try to cut it. My mat's starting to lose its sticky. So what I do is I stick it down and I rub it really, really good all over the whole paper just using my hand, rub it really nicely and get it stuck down. And then it's sticking a lot better. You see I'm bending it and if I bend it too hard of course it's still going to come up. So you want to be careful not to bend your mat too much but that will help you use your mat a little bit longer. And another tip one of my YouTube subscribers gave was to use a brayer and just rub over it. And that way it'll stick really nicely too. So if you have a brayer, you can grab that and then you don't have to rub over it. And again, it's stuck pretty well. So if you take care of your blade by cleaning it out and you take care of your mat by making sure to get all the fuzzies off, you should be able to prolong the life of these items. Those are my first things for troubleshooting is replace your mat or replace your blade. Though when you're cutting along and you all of a sudden have problems cutting, things are getting fuzzier, things aren't cutting all the way through, these are usually your two main culprits. Either your blade needs to be cleaned or replaced or your mat needs to be cleaned or replaced. Of course you have to have your blade settings correctly. So if you're cutting a new material, you might have to play around with it a little while to get your blade settings correctly. I found the pre-programmed blade settings for cardstock were not good enough for my really thick cardstock. I use Stampin' Up! cardstock and Paper Tray Ink cardstock and they're on the thicker sides. So I do have to adjust those blade settings and I shared my blade settings that I use in my first video in this series. So you can go check that out. I'll have a link below and a link over on the blog post to that. So that is it for this mini series guys. I'm really excited to be doing more Cameo tutorials in the future. This is just the beginning of my tutorials. 
on my giveaway post that I had on Sunday. That's one of the most suggested topics is cameo tutorials. So I do plan on doing more cameo tutorials for you guys. I love my cameo. I've had so much fun learning about it. If you're still not a cameo owner and you're on the fence, I really hope you dive in and you save up for one and get one. I think it's worth every penny. You can find really good deals online sometimes. It has so many possibilities. You can design your own cuts. It's just a great machine. And I'm just so happy I got it and replaced all my Cricut machines because I feel like it cuts so much better than my expression ever did. And I have so many more possibilities just from the design software being so amazing. So that is it for this series. I hope you guys liked it. If you have a specific cameo tutorial that you'd like to see, leave me a comment below and let me know what tutorial you'd like to see next for this machine. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much. And if there's other videos you guys wanna see, just let me know. Oh, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I put out a lot of new videos every week and like me on Facebook and check out my blog daily because I post a tutorial or a project every single day. And I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye.